off. I can't believe that we're actually shopping for another trailer. I know. Uh, how, I didn't how did we end up I didn't here? think that was going to be the case. <laughs> It is true, we are looking at RVs once again. I don't know what's wrong with us. We're never gonna get be able to get fully away from the RV world, but it's not maybe quite what you think. Welcome back to No Ordinary Path. I'm Kristen and we are a travel nurse family. We have been full-time traveling for the last five years. And right now we are in the middle of a little bit of a break back at our home base in Phoenix, Arizona. We are here until January when we have big plans for our next adventure, which we'll be sharing in the near future. But right now, we're trying to decide in the meantime what we can do for adventure because we absolutely love adventure. That's part of why we even got into this lifestyle in the first place. Also, update, we have not sold our toy hauler fifth wheel yet. So we really can't do anything until we figure that process out, but we can go out and look. We started with thinking we were just gonna tent camp, we're gonna find a tent. And then we progressed to a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, until we're at like these like mini travel trailers now. So come with us as we explore all of our options today. Before we get started, we wanna say a big thank you to RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding for sponsoring this video. One thing about camping is it's not always the most comfortable night's sleep, but luckily in your RV, you can get a really great night's sleep on a quality mattress that's like the mattress at home. And luckily, RV Mattress makes these great Brooklyn Bedding mattresses for your RV. We have a Dream Foam Essential in our toy hauler. It is a king size Dream Foam Essential as well as Dream Foam Essentials queen sizes in our garage for the kids to sleep on, and they have made a world of difference. Brooklyn Bedding also makes wonderful mattresses for your house, which is perfect for us since we have both an RV and a house. We love that they have a factory right here in Arizona. And in fact, they're basically neighbors. We've even gotten to visit it and see the quality as it's being made. As one of the very first companies to roll up a mattress and ship it in a box, it was really cool to see how it's done. And it's even more exciting when you see that box on your front porch and you get to watch it expand into a full-size mattress. We love that they have a 10 year warranty on them and there's a 120 night sleep trial. Recently, they've upped our discount code to 25% off. So if you use No Ordinary Path at the link in our description, you will get 25% off of your purchase, which is a fantastic deal. Besides mattresses, they have really great quality sheets, which we have on our bed and we love. They've got this weighted throw that is absolutely amazing. Now here in Phoenix, it's a little bit warm for a weighted throw, but our mattress has a cooling pad on the top, which keeps us cool at night. It's very important here in the Southwest. Unfortunately for us, sleeping in a tent is probably not going to be the most comfortable, but at least we'll get to come back home to a very comfortable Aurora Lux mattress. Make sure to go check out that link in the description below and use our code NOORDINARYPATH for 25% off. Before we ever RV'd, we would go tent camping as a family. Now, most of this was done when our kids were real little. And so there was a ton of gear that we had to take with us. And it was always a huge ordeal to pack all of it up in our car and set it up. And you wanted to stay more than one night because otherwise it wasn't worth it. We are going to actually be going back to tent camping a little bit. Now that we won't have the RV, it won't be quite as easy to just go to sleep for the night. There will be a little bit of a setup involved. And so we've been thinking through how we can make it easier, whether that is like a really quick set tent, that we, like a ground tent that is super quick set, that's fast. We can put all of our supplies in a bucket and really organize ourselves. Or we could have a trailer that is dedicated to camping and we can do like weekender trips in a trailer, but we haven't been in this market ever. Let's go see what is out there right now. I'm really intrigued by this. Uh, we're talking about camping and not living in something. So this is a truck, what do you call them? Like a pop-in camper? camper, a truck camper. But it's like a Harry Potter magical thing that has a lot of space, way more space than I thought it would inside. So 
So here's what it looks like on the outside. Obviously when you're traveling, that tent part is down, so it's not super humongous. See kind of around here, but then up here, there's the hole. And you come up here and it's cut out and here's the rooftop tent up here. This is one of the nest tents. Um, and they've cut this hole in the, in the roof of the cabin to uh, be able to fit up on top of there. So it kind of makes it for a unique situation because we can have one kid here, two kids here and two adults up there, or two adults here and two kids up there. Everyone would have a place to sleep. Obviously we would still do most of the cooking outside. But you could Probably. cook, you could cook inside if you needed to. If the weather is bad, you could sit in here and play cards or, or whatever. You could go to a lot more places because it would just be in the bed of the truck. It's very intriguing. I don't know if we're like totally into it or not, but uh, I didn't know this existed. I saw the sink there. There's not a lot of food storage. I don't know where you would store food. In, in these pockets or maybe in those. It definitely isn't something you spend a lot of time inside. It's just a place to sleep at night. Yeah. Really intriguing. It's just, it's just folded up. This probably does, oh my God, $46,000. This is more expensive oh, than my clear. actual Jeep. <laughs> This one is more what we actually came here to look for because we're thinking of putting a, a nest tent on top of the Jeep and then pulling this behind. This could be completely outfitted, but could be stored in our backyard so easily. We're in our garage when we're not using it. It's got the galley already on here, so I wouldn't have to put a galley inside the back of my Jeep. Um, and we can still overland. This thing is built to go on trails. With this setup, what we would probably do is John and I would sleep on top of the trailer. The boys would sleep on top of the Jeep and Chloe and the dog would sleep inside the Jeep. They make these mattresses that you fold your seats down and the mattress goes in the Jeep. And so Chloe and the dog could sleep inside the Jeep while the boys were on top and we'd be on top of the trailer. And then we could all ride in the Jeep when we're on the trails. This one is 33 gross weight, so like fully loaded. That one, the most that one can be is 33. That actually we could pull. This one would be really pushing our limits, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, unless we got a different vehicle. Maybe. But like, wow, this one's. This one also is kind of like Harry Potter style. It's huge <laughs> inside. Inside is quite. Yeah, it's it's really big. Well it's here. All sky lit. They have all these skylights. Yeah, and then here's this big old bed here. That looks like a queen size bed. <laughs> so this is that's the OP2. So it's the same as that one. Yeah, this is the a little bit bigger than the one we were looking at, and we wouldn't get the rack because that adds too much weight. Well, unless we're towing it with a Tacoma or something. Yeah, I guess that's true. I always thought it would be fun to have like a pop up, and this is like pop ups on steroids. It's like the off road pop up version. I, like how I, I really like that. <laughs> this is what it looks like when it's all popped up. It's got that tent on. The thing that's cool about these tents is they are all, it's air, com it's compressed this air. This one's bigger. Yeah. Bed on each bed side. Here, bed over there and bed here. It's still kind of expensive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Wendy was 28 when we bought her. <laughs> this is all just compressed air. It's like these tubes that have compressed air in it. And then you push this button not in there i don't know wherever it is inside we looked at it it's here you push this button and then it inflates oh, in like two fridge. in like two minutes we're out looking again at overland options it's a it's a tough call because we are really torn in between should we get one trailer that meets all our needs and what we're talking about here is a trailer that's beefy enough to be able to take to the trails maybe not like 
a true Jeep trailer that's going to go on all of the hardcore RV or RV, all of the hardcore off-road trails with us. They certainly make those. Yeah. But maybe something that we can find that's in between that's also maybe big enough to put like the bikes in and stuff like that when mm -hmm. we're traveling across the country because boy, we sure beat up our bikes. Yeah, and we definitely know? still we still want to go take contracts. We still have places we want to go visit. So having a trailer to haul our gear in, even though we're going to stay in an Airbnb or stay in a furnish finder or something, mm -hmm. having something to haul with and then also once we get there to go explore with yeah. is really appealing to have something that's all in one. Yeah. But we're finding that they're expensive. They're and expensive and they're and not as beefy. Yeah, it's I'm just I'm just torn between do I want a true off-road trailer so that we could take the vehicle or vehicles out into the true depths of wherever we want to go exploring or do we want you know a trailer that kind of meets all the needs you know what yeah. what's going to be the better situation we've we, even talked about like two different trailers yeah, this is, i mean we're both we're he's not going to keep his big dually truck he's gonna yeah, no. get something else but that means we actually both could tow something on the way to a contract so we could have a utility trailer at a whole level all of our stuff to the contract destination and then also have an off-road trailer that we take with us camping and we can haul all of that with us to our contract We'll see. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> it's kind of funny because we're like going full circle. We were There's like, we're done of... RVing and now we're looking at RVs again. Well, sort of. Sort of. <laughs> we're going to, I mean, if we go that route, we're going to go from like the largest toy hauler to the smallest one you could possibly buy. Right. All right, so we have the stove top and then the this is the fridge. This is, our, this is the pantry. The well, you wouldn't want to put anything in there that might melt. <laughs> and then it's got the, the bat wing. It's like the nice little hybrid so that we could take it out. And I like this particular one because it has that kind of enclosed storage. It has a ramp on the back, so it makes loading the bikes really easy. Yeah. Um, it has the rooftop tent because some of these trailers that are this size don't have the ability to put anything on top of them because they're just not built that way. Right. Um, and it's still compact enough that we could take it down most trails that we would like to. Now, it's not like an overlanding trailer. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's, it's, more off-roady, but it's not like got a fully independent suspension and all that kind of stuff. sits a little lower than I would like. We could add on later. And we might. We'll see if we get this. The other thing I really like about this one is that it has onboard water storage, which is something I'm finding is kind of rare in this trailer size with the features and stuff like that. Most of them do not have onboard water pumps and tanks. Right. Um, the Nobo 10.6 that we like so far um, is has 30 gallons and it, a heater. Okay, this is our next option, the Intech Flyer, and it's a little smaller than the Nobo. It doesn't have quite as many features as the Nobo. We'd have to buy a tent for the top, but it can have a tent on the top. I like this, that this is oh, way more cool. organized than the Nobo was. Does this have a sink and a, uh, like any water no, capacity? Yeah, no. no water systems. No water systems. No water system. So that's, that is one difference. Definitely seems more rugged than the other one was, like uh, capability wise. I don't know. I mean, you, <laughs> might, the be, AC in it you might be able to get bikes in there without breaking them down. Angled, maybe. Maybe. Not the 29ers, probably. It's too early to tell exactly which one we're going to go with, but I will tell you that Nobo is very high up on our list. It is something that we are really interested in pursuing as soon as we get this big trailer sold. Chloe keeps asking, when are we going to take the little trailer out? And we're like, we have to get the little trailer first. There's more research to be done, but I am curious if you have any one of these things or something like it that we've talked about in today's video, please tell us in the comments, what are your thoughts? Tell us everything because we are in the research mode and we're very likely going to buy some kind of RV in our near future. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like so that you get notifications. If you haven't seen it yet, we're starting a new series on Tuesdays called Travel Healthcare 101 and it is all about travel nursing and how you can get started from the like the first thoughts of it all the way to the end of your first contract. So if you are interested in doing something like that, please check it out. And if you know someone, make sure you share it. Otherwise, we'll see you every other Sunday right here with our adventures to keep you updated. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out there.